to welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We want to welcome everybody. I'm Pastor Mike here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we want to tell everyone welcome to our online broadcast and worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be a word that'll be shared, that'll be a blessing to your life. So listen, I'm telling you, God is dealing with us about extreme faith. And I'm so excited about this message that's going to be presented to you today. And that's going to be sown into your hearts. And so, you know, as I was just getting ready um, to just bring forth this message, this is something I hadn't done in a long time. We normally would do it um, at the beginning of every service of Spirit of Fire. And I got this from my pastors. And, um, but it's just on my heart to begin to share it this morning. These are our favorite confessions. The Bible declares that whatsoever things that you shall say, doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things which you, which you say shall come to pass, you shall have. You shall have what you say. Listen, I'm telling you, as we speak, our worlds are framed by the word of God and the words that come out of our mouth. Whether they're good, whether they're bad. Whatever we speak and we believe when we speak it, it comes into existence. So we want to declare some things. How many of y'all can use some favor out there? I know I can. So as we begin to declare this, I want you to repeat this after me. And as you begin to repeat this, I want you to believe to see this in your life right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So with that in mind, make these confessions of your faith. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for making me righteous and accepted through the blood of Jesus. Because of that, I am blessed and highly favored by you. I am the object of your affection. Your favor surrounds me as a shield. And the first thing that people come in contact with is my favor shield. Thank you that I have favor with you and man today. All day long, every day, people go out of their way to bless and to help me. I, in turn, bless and help others. Say I have favor with everyone that I deal with on a daily basis. Say doors that were once closed are now open for me. Say I receive preferential treatment. I have special privileges for I am, I am, I am God's favorite child. Say no good thing will he withhold from me because of God's favor upon my life. My enemies cannot triumph over me. Say I have supernatural increase and in promotion. Say I declare restoration of everything that the devil has stolen from me. Say I have honor in the midst of my adversaries and an increase of assets, especially in real estate and an expansion of territory. Say, because I'm highly favored by God, say I experience great victories, supernatural turnarounds, and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. Let me stop here real quick. That every time I come up with this supernatural turnaround, sometimes it may mean a quick turnaround. But sometimes what that means is God will strengthen you supernaturally to help you to endure the process of your turnaround. And so God is strengthening you because some of you have been feeling kind of weary and kind of tired in your well doing. God says, listen, you're going to reap if you don't faint, if you don't give up, cave in or quit. This is your season. This is your time. Don't you dare give up right now. He says this. Now, watch this. I love this part. <laughs> Say, even ungodly authorities grant petitions unto me. Say, policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are changed and reversed 
on my behalf. Say, I receive recognition, prominence, and honor. Say, I win battles. I don't even have to fight because God fights them for me. Say, this is the day and the set time, the designated moment for me to experience the free favors of God that profusely and lavishly abound on my behalf. Say, I believe it, I receive it, and I have it now, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want you to begin to lift up your hands and begin to praise God for it right now. I want you to believe that you receive this right now. Listen, I'm telling you that God is raising up people to use their power, their resources, and their influence to assist you and to help you. And that God is raising you up to do the same thing. He's increasing your resources. He's increasing your influence. He's increasing your capacity to be a blessing to others. But he wants you to start with where you currently are. Be a blessing to somebody where you currently are. Stop always looking to receive from people, but look to sow. And in the process of you sowing, in the process of you blessing, your hands will be open to receive. And God is going to bring supernatural increase, supernatural influence. And I'm telling you, it's time for you to release your faith right now to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I also hear this, that there are some of you that you're, give, you're givers. You've always been a giver. You've always been a servant. But it's been hard for you to receive to the level in which you've been given. God is saying it's time for you to receive now. You got too much seed in the ground for you not to experience the level of harvest you're supposed to. You know you're supposed to be at a better place in your life. You know to the degree in which you've sown, you have not received. He says you need to receive it now. Expect to see it. You know, some people, I know it's more blessed to give than to receive. One of the reasons is because, watch this, the less is blessed by the better. So when you begin to sow, you position yourself because God always multiplies the seed sown. So now, watch this, because you give, God is going to bless it, multiply it, increase it, and give it back to you. So you always want to be in the posture of the person that's sowing into the lives of people. But you also got to realize that God wants you to receive. He created all things richly for you to enjoy. You have labored and struggled too long. You have worked so hard. And God is saying it's time for you to live in the harvest of the seeds that you've been sowing all these years. You constantly blessed other people. You've constantly been praying for other people. God is saying now it's time for you to enjoy this abundant life. Now it's time for you to rest. Now it's time for you to enjoy God's creation. It's time for you to travel. It's time for you to go ahead and buy that thing you've always been wanting to buy. It's time for you to enjoy. Enjoy life, God is saying. While you are ministering to others, God is ministering to you. While you ministering to him, he's manifesting on your behalf. I didn't mean to go here this quick, but I'm telling you, God is here. God is here. He's always been there. He has already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And now it's time for you to receive it. Listen, if you, if you believe that, I want somebody to type amen. You can shout it. I can't hear you right now, but I can't see your amen that's typed out. Tell God I receive it. Say, I receive it. I receive your goodness. I receive your grace. I receive your love. Because God loves you with the same love that he loved Jesus with. And so you need to receive it right now. Praise God. Well, we jumped into this thing today. Listen, we're going to continue with our series entitled Extreme Faith. And so we ended last week and I'm talking about seven key points and for you to develop a high level of faith. And so when you receiving these things and developing these things, and last week we talked about the integrity of the word of God. And then we talked about our redemption in Christ. And so this week we're gonna pick up with number three. But before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to meet the needs of these, your precious people. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you right now, Father, that every eye is open to see, every ear is open to hear, anoint their ears to hear. We thank you for our hearts being open to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we thank you that we do covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. 
Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. You are our guide. You are our comforter. You're the one ready to give us peace. You're the one who calls it out and who calls it safe. You're the one who reveals all truth to us. Breathe on this word today. These are the words of the Lord Jesus himself and of God the Father, that you will not say anything unless the Father has already authorized it. So right now, use me as your mouthpiece to speak into the lives of people. We thank you for transformation and change. Thank you for the anointing of the prophet. Thank you for the anointing of the teacher. Thank you, Father, that you're growing even an apostolic anointing to establish, to develop, to be a wise master builder in the body of Christ. Thank you, Father, right now. We give you praise in advance right now, Father, that you're ever increasing us. We give you praise in advance for it right now. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Y'all, let's do this. Let's, let's, can, can we turn up the air real quick? We're going to go ahead. It's fine. We'll get it together. I want to make sure I'm comfortable with this today. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sow this thing today. God is dealing about extreme faith. What, what, what is it? What is it? What is this faith? God dealt with me about this. And um, some time ago, I was going to minister on this, but um, this is right before we start dealing with um, the Holy Spirit and working up towards the day of Pentecost. And this message was kind of ringing. It was ringing in my heart. And so I felt like this was the time to release it. And so God has really been dealing about expanding our capacity to receive teaching his people who they are. But at the same time, it's like, okay, God, I want to exemplify and I want to be an example of what it is I'm preaching. I said, it's between me and you, God. I was talking to my wife about it. I said, it's time to believe big. It's time when he talks about extreme faith, that means something that's existing at a high degree. That means exceeding the, the ordinary. It means to be radical. It's time for a radical faith. It's time. This is why you've seen this generation come up like never before. And I'm telling you, this generation now, they are hungry. This millennial generation and the generations to come, there are some that have been there before. But I'm telling you, there is a hunger in the earth. And the earth, the Bible says, is in travail, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And this is part of our vision, is to teach people who they are in Christ. To help develop you as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ to help exemplify and to release you into the earth, to show the world who the true sons and daughters of God are. And so God says, my people need to be trained in my word and in my spirit. And so there is about to be a great coming together of the word and the spirit. There are a lot of people who taught the word, but didn't demonstrate in the spirit. There are a lot of people who demonstrated in the spirit, but wasn't teaching the word to that degree. That degree. But God is saying there is a blending so that you can begin to see infallible proofs. Things that you read about in the Bible, you about to see in the natural. And so people watch this, not in order to believe, but because we believe, we want to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so God is saying this, it is time for my people to come up hither and to begin to function to where they are seated in Christ. See, you seated with Christ in heavenly places, but is your mind as a surface dweller. God says you need to come up hither. You need to think like I think. And so God is about to totally shift the parameters of your thought. He's about to give you a paradigm shift. He's about to show you some things that you've been praying some stuff out. You've been praying some things out in the spirit and even in the natural. But now God is saying the stuff you've been praying out, I'm about to show out and I'm about to show you and reveal to you what you've been releasing out of your spirit. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go here now. I'm getting ready to go here because he, he wants me to sow this word into you. So we talked about number one, these seven keys. And, and, and listen, I, I got to settle down for a second. I'm going to get revved up again. But I got to sow this word into your heart because what can happen is we can have an experience in the spirit. And once the high of that emotion or the high wears off of that experience, then the word of God has to be the anchor to your soul. This is why it's so important. This is why studying the word is so important. This is why your belief system and your the doctrine in which you live by, it has to be solid because this is the foundation in which you live your life. So when the emotion isn't there, your belief and your faith keeps you solid 
and keeps you in place. Because sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes, sometimes it's serious. Your emotions and your feelings can go all over the place. But now we want to make sure that our minds are stabilized with the word of God so that no matter what comes, we are anchored. We are anchored in the word of God. We are secure. So no matter what wave comes by in our life, we're not going to be double minded. So we're not going to be unstable. This is a time of great stability in your life. Listen, I've, I've been in this thing for years. I've been in ministry for over 23 years now, 24 years, really um, ordained 23 years ago as a minister, probably one of the youngest ministers in the ministry I was a part of at that time. And God, I've seen it. I've just seen, you know, sometimes when I see instability in people's lives, it's one of those things that just irritates me, not with the people per se, sometimes yes, but so far as with the enemy, because I hate to see Satan come and rip people's minds and cause them to go back and forth. And so when God started dealing me about this, he's saying, now, son, I want you to begin to experience a level of extreme faith. It's time for you to stretch out, because when you talk about extreme faith, this goes beyond what your abilities can do. I'm not talking about you believing for something that you can do. You, I'm talking about believing for stuff only God can do, that he can only get the glory out of this thing. And it's time to stretch to that level. And so, listen, it's time to stop looking at the bank account to see if you can do it. It's time to stop looking at the credit report to let that determine if you can do it. God is just saying, will you trust me? I'm trying to get stuff to you. There is stuff that has been dammed up behind the scenes in the spirit realm that I've been trying to get to you for years. But the only reason I couldn't get it to you is because your faith wasn't up to that level to receive it. He says, you got to up your faith now. You got to build yourself up now because now watch this. If I bless you with the house, don't worry about if you can afford it. If I bless you with it, I'm already showing you that I'm going to give you the capability to handle the maintenance of what I blessed you with. So just go ahead and receive it now. So God is saying, I want you ready for this thing. Now, we dealt with number one, the integrity of the word of God. First of all, you need to know that the word of God is actually what it declares itself to be. That's why we started there. None of this works if you don't believe God's word. None of this works if you're not solid in the fact. This is why Satan tries to come and say, well, you know, man wrote the Bible. Yes, man did write the Bible, but he wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Just like if I have a person who's a secretary and I'm dictating the letter, it's my word. Even though they wrote it, it's what I'm saying. And God is saying, this is my word that I'm breathed on. This is this word is living. This word will keep you energized when it seems like what's happening, what you believe in for ain't working. This word, you got to take it back before God. And he said, put me in remembrance of my word, what I said. He said, come, let us plead together. Just like a lawyer gathers their evidence and pleads their case before the judge. You gather your scriptures. You gather your evidence and say, and say this, God, your word declares. You said this in your word. You promised this. And now I'm holding you to your word. God is only as good as his word. And I'm telling you, if you take God at his word, you're going to see some things. You're about to step out of the spirit. I'm telling you, out of the natural into the spirit. Watch what I'm telling you. You're about to have water walking faith experiences because God is calling you to come. He's calling you to come unto the deep. I'm, oh, man. Come on. Okay, Holy Ghost. He said, I'm calling you. He says, if you would just trust the voice that you're hearing, if you would just trust to know that it's me calling you to do this. He says, you're about to have water walking experiences. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They shall speak with new tongues. And I'm telling you, they shall cast out devils. This is the time you got to stop running from the devil and start running towards him. Just like David ran towards Goliath. He says, wait a minute, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who are these people that have no covenant with God? And you trying to tell me I can't come into this building? You trying to tell me I can't possess this land? You telling me that my God won't cause healing to come into my body? Who are you? I walk in covenant agreement with the almighty God. He the one that created you. You practice in medicine. And he's the author of all healing. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. So how dare you mock my God? 
And God is about to show many infallible proofs for those that will believe him, for those that will trust him. And he's just simply saying, will you trust me this day? Will you trust me? Glory to God. Some of you are like, well, Pastor, what's going on with you? I'm going through the transformation chamber. Me and my God been having secret counsel together. And he's been downloading stuff in my spirit. I'm telling you, I can't think small no more. Listen, small, listen. It, ooh, I'm telling you. Listen, I can't, listen, I can't be confined into small and tight spaces. My faith grows. Remember, in the book of Isaiah 10, 27, it talks about in that day, the yoke shall be removed, um, the burden shall be removed off your shoulder and the yoke from around your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The Amplified Version says it like this, because of the fatness of the anointing, the yoke that tried to hold you cannot hold you because as that anointing increases, that thing shatters off of you. And this is why it is. Listen, he says, if you know my word, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and that truth shall make you free. Why are you just in the presence of God? Why are you just in the word of God? Why are you just declaring and decreeing? Before you know it, you will turn around and that thing that was on your back, that thing that was around your neck has shattered off of you. Why? Because you outgrew the thing that was holding you captive. Satan cannot hold you captive when you know who you are. This is why the Bible says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He says awaken unto righteousness and sin not. When you understand who you are, sin will fall off of you. That bondage will come off of you. That addiction will come off of you. Why? Because you've outgrown it. Glory to God. Uh, okay, come on, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is a new thing. This is, I'm telling you, you better hear me. I know I got my notes here, but I sense the spirit of God lead me to begin to prophesy to the nations now. He's saying this, my children are rising up like never before. He says, I'm going into areas that have been dilapidated and torn down and I'm about to rebuild. I'm about to rebuild. It's just like Nehemiah rebuilding the wall. God is giving you wisdom to rebuild in areas that Satan has torn down. He's going to cause you to go into areas where there are people that are crying out for help. They're crying for a better way. They're crying for a new life. And God is saying, you are the answer. You are the answer. I told you that I've given unto you the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling the world back unto me. You got to take this message of my goodness. You got to take this message of my grace. You got to take this message of my power to those that don't believe. And you got to go with boldness. There is a holy boldness and the spirit of fire. I begin to declare unto you that God will waken you out of your sleep. He'll begin to give you dreams and visions again. God is saying, I'm going to cause you to dream again. I'm going to cause you to believe again. There's a stirring that's taking place in your life and in your heart. And he says, this time around, you will get it done, thus saith the Lord. And you will not back down this time. For some of you that have been crying out for a second chance, God's saying, okay, I've heard you. Now prepare for it. Prepare for it. Prepare your mind. Prepare your body. Some of you believing for, chil uh, believing for children. He says, prepare your body for it now. He says, get rid of the sugars. Get, start changing your diet. As you change your diet, all of your functions, your, your reproductive organs and systems will begin to align and that child will not be stillborn and that child will grow into fruition and your fruit shall not cast its fruit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> before it's time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And that thing shall come to pass and that baby shall come to full term and you shall enjoy that your quiver will be full. God is speaking expressly to you right now. Don't you give up having children. Don't you dare give up. Thus saith the Lord. He says, if you can believe me, 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 he says, get rid of the hurt, get rid of the pain. And you've been masking your pain long enough. He says, will you allow me to come on in and heal you of the hurt? Will you just admit that you've been hurt? That you felt like, watch this, you felt like God let you down. And it won't God that let you down. The thief coming, but, but for the steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. He says, now is your time. He says, this is your season. You are in the season of your, your greatest miracle, your greatest blessing, 
You are in the window of your season right now. Your season is not up. He said, now is the time for extreme faith. Now is the time to believe bigger me. Go ahead and get the nursery ready. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you willing to do? Get ready. Pack up the boxes. Start get ready to move. Get ready to go into a new tax bracket. Get ready to go into a new zip code. Get ready to go into a new season. Listen, I'm talking about radical faith. I'm talking about seeing blinded eyes open like never before. It is but a small thing to see the dead raised. It is but a small thing to see the main heal and that new body parts begin to grow out and begin to form. God wants to show himself. There are body parts ready to be released from heaven. For those that have been, I'm telling you, from fingers to toes to organs to kidneys to new hearts to new heart valves. God says, can you believe me? Can you believe me when the doctor said you will never come off of this medication? And I'm telling you now, in the name of Jesus, you are coming off every medication you've been on right now in Jesus' name. Yo, I'm telling you, your diet is changing. Your thought process is changing. Your taste is changing. God's going to start causing you to start rejecting sugar because he says right there, I'm telling you, it's been killing you. And he says this. There are things that are about to transform and change for this new season, for this new life, for this new time. And I'm telling you, he says, for some of you, he says, because you've been so weary and you couldn't speak for yourself. I've been waking up intercessors all around this world to pray forth my will in the earth because some of you could not pray for yourself. So I began to call men and women to get up and to begin to speak. And they've been declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus. And the angels of God have been surrounding you from heaven. And I'm telling you now, you're going to see some miraculous works. You're going to see it. 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 Glory to God. I'm telling you, this goes into this third point. In order for you to begin to grow in this extreme faith, now I didn't got all of that out. I want to share this with you. You got to have a reality that you are a new creation. You got to understand who you are. Your identity in this time is of the utmost importance. You got to know who you are. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, in the Amplified Version, It says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition is passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. I want you to receive this for your life. Listen to me. I hear that, Lord. Yeah. I don't care if you've been saved for 20 years. The fresh and the new has come. There is going to be a freshness like a fresh start, a fresh wind, a fresh fire that God wants to bring into your life and it'll be like you're born again again. And so there'll be the energy and the strength to get this job done. Some of you has been so long, your energy has worn down. But remember, the Holy Ghost can quicken your mortal body and can make it alive. And I'm telling you now, God wants to remove gout out of people's joints He's going to remove the stiffness. The inflammation is about to leave. God wants to detox your body, but also your mind. So you can begin to think the way you needed to think once again. See, the reason that you've been fainting is because you failed to work your faith. So you are like the person in the book of Mark 4, where you receive the word with all readiness. You receive the word with joy, but then persecution, situations arise for the word's sake. And because, watch this, you weren't rooted in that thing, that now all of this stuff hits you to get you out of believing that word because Satan knew if they experience victory in this area, ain't no stopping them. And God is saying now, he is bringing new, I'm telling you, he is bringing new people. He is bringing new relationships. He is giving you second chances and opportunities. And now you got to come out of the guilt and the shame and the hurt and the pain because you've been stuck at the last place of disobedience. Let me say this again. Some of you been stuck at the last place where you knew that you didn't do what God told you to do. He said, go back to the last thing I told you. If you start from there, he says, am I not the God who created the heavens and the earth? 
Am I not the God who put the stars in the skies, who begin to set the moon and the sun and begin to set the earth, the earth and the planets in ro- orbit and rotation? Am I not the same God who caused the sea to come up to the shore and tell it how to go back again? Am I not the same God who created the heavens and the earth? Am I not the same God who brought you out the last situation? Am I not the same God who helped you out that last dilemma? He says, why have you forgotten? Why have you forsaken the God of Israel? Why have you forsaken your God? Why have you forgotten what I've already done for you? If I did it once, I'll do it again. But this time around, I'll do it greater. He says, no longer. Okay, here we go. He says, no longer. Oh. Whoo, help me, help, me, help me explain this, Lord. He says, you're coming from a Moses experience to a Joshua experience. God fought for Moses, but he fought with Joshua. God told Moses to stretch out his staff. He told, Mo- he told Joshua to pick up a sword and fight. He's going to show you how to build and to fight at the same time. Because sometimes Satan has distracted you with temptations, with things, with distractions. So you spend all your energy fighting and none of your energy building. And so God is saying this, when you get into that place where you are so focused on him, focused on his assignment, focused on his will for your life, that even as the enemy begins to come, you're going to be so developed and so strong in your faith that you won't tell the enemy, Satan, I rebuke you. That means stop no more. You will not distract me with my children. You will not distract me in this area of attack. You will not distract me by hitting my body. Listen, the same God that already provided healing is the same God that already has caused me to be healed. So I am the healer. So even though this thing has hit my body, I enforce my faith. I enforce my covenant of health. And I declare that as for me and my body, we are completely healed. For with long life, God satisfies me. He's going to show me his salvation. I live long. I live strong. And listen, I'm telling you, you about to come into the greatest season of your life. You about to look. I've been hearing that past. I've been hearing it. But will you believe it? Will you believe it? All things are possible to him that believe because I'm working on your faith now. I'm working on your faith. I'm working on your faith now. Why can't you work on two projects at the same time? Why can't you build a house and buy the car at the same time? Why can't you work on the ministry, work on the house, develop your children, develop your body, develop your marriage, develop your relationships? God is ambidextrous. He can do all of that with you at one time. And I'm telling you, God is working in you. He's going to pull the best out of you. And some of you, the pain that you're going through, it ain't Satan. It's God pulling the greatness out of you. Because if, watch this, I'm telling you, if you stop looking at your problem as a, as a roadblock and start looking at it as a situation and an opportunity to exercise who you are, this is but light work. This is but light work. This is but this is like me going into the gym. He said, put on 10 pounds. 10 pounds ain't nothing. I do that in my sleep. Put on 20, 25, 45. Give me some 45s on each side. Let me bench press this thing out of my life. Let me bench press this debt out of my life. Let me bench press this depression out of my life. But, but watch this, because when I speak, I'm resisting. When I speak against the enemy, I'm resisting. When I take authority over thoughts with the words of my mouth, I'm resisting and I'm developing my faith. I'm growing strong and stronger. The reason why some of you have not grown is because you're not resisting. You're not using your weapons and the arsenal that God has already given you. You don't realize that, watch this, you listen, you've been given authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Let me, I'm going to calm down for a second because I'm getting stirred up. I'm stirred up. Watch this. I know some people like, no, come on, keep it, keep, keep it going. No, uh, uh. This is part of the problem. You get hype. There are many people who get hype, but have no substance once the hype leaves. And then I counsel them behind the scenes. After preaching the same message for years, something's wrong. You got to grow in this thing. The reason I can get hype because this in me. The reason why it's in me because I don't spend time with it. The reason I don't spend time with it because I had to. Well, won't nobody else around. And it's just me and God and my head going crazy and Satan trying to throw thoughts of now suicide. You, ain't nobody going to miss you. Go ahead and show them what they can, how they can live without you. They can't make it without you and all this stuff. I done been through all that junk. 
That's why I can sniff it a mile away and I hate it. Listen, I've always hated bullies and Satan has been bullying God's people long enough. And God told me, go teach my people. And I sense the anointing to snatch you out of the pit of hell. I wish you was right here with me. The anointing is on me. I just feel like I need to lay hands on somebody. I'm telling you, God is saying this. Okay, let me, let me tell you. I call out that tumor in you now. I command it to shrink and to dissolve. I command the lump under your breast to go now in Jesus name. I command your levels to begin to normalize. I command your blood pressure to come from 150. I see it 150 to come down to 120 over 80. I command it to come into alignment. I command the, glu the glaucoma to leave now in the name of Jesus. I command migraines is like a pain right here in the back of your neck. It's almost, and the thought has come that that's an aneurysm that's about to hit you. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, Satan has been trying to come and to destroy and to kill people. He's trying to kill you silently by what you eat. Because he can't get you off in sin, he's going to get you off with your diet. He's going to get you off with your appetite. And the Spirit of God says, no, no more. He says, my people shall live long and they shall live strong. There is a force of faith that's going through these airwaves. And God is saying, I'm changing and rearranging things. He says this, you might as well go ahead and begin to believe me for it. You might as well go ahead. If you want a new house, go ahead and believe me for it. If you want new furniture, go ahead and believe me for it. If you're ready to come off of that sick, off of that medication, off of that cane, go ahead and believe me for it. But I've been here for years. But you know what? I'm just getting old and it just come with age and it just come with this. God said, stop believing that lie. You can live long and you can live strong. Just like Moses, his eyes were not dim, neither his natural forces abated. He lived long and he lived strong. And you can live long and you can live strong. Don't you dare give up right now. Don't you dare quit because your latter years should be greater than your former years. And I declare it in the name of Jesus from your debts being canceled to the money coming into your account. There's about to be supernatural transfer. There's about to be a revelation that hits your life. God is going to give you witty inventions, ideas, and concepts. He's going to give you the team of people to enforce and to implement the ideas that he's giving you. So you better go ahead. No, -uh, I keep hearing this. I keep hearing resistance in the spirit. Don't you resist what God is telling you to do. Why? Because it's going to cause you to come out of your normal. But God wants to give you a new normal now. He wants you to, listen, you can't give up now. He says, come out of your laziness. Come out of your slothfulness and come unto me now. He says, I'll show you how to do it if you just trust me. I said this to you last week. You're going to have to change now. That means your new normal. See, this is why some people are afraid to go into their new season because they know they can't. You cannot be lazy and go into your new season. You're going to have to have a new regimen. It may mean getting up earlier. It may mean staying up late. It may mean, watch this, you going into circles and into rooms that you're not the smartest person in because sometimes you don't want to feel dumb. So you hang around people that you're constantly pouring into, but you're not going into rooms that people are pouring into you. And so if you're constantly the one that's always pouring, but never has somebody pouring into you, you're in the wrong rooms. You need to go into places where you are stretched. But sometimes you feel dumb because like, man, I should have known this. But now listen, watch this. Pride has been keeping some people out because now you know that you should have been farther along. So you don't want to ask help of certain people. And the very person that you're despising might be the person God uses to bring you out because he's getting rid of the pride at the same time in your heart so that you can receive what it is. So don't you dare. Listen, if God could use a donkey to speak to his prophet, don't you know he can use whoever he wants to use to help escort you into your new season? So you better be open to these new opportunities. You better be open to these new doors that God is opening that no man can shut. See, the problem is you want to choose the door that he tells you to go through. He says, what if I'm telling you to go through this door, but you don't like the way the door looks. But God knows everything that you need is wrapped in you going through that door. I'm telling you, there are things, there are things, and it's rushing through me so fast, I got to calm down because I'm seeing it so quick. It's just like a chicken. It's just like a bird coming out of their shell, 
and the bird has to peck through the shell from the inside out because during the pecking process, that's when his neck is strengthened and his muscles are strengthened. And watch this, in order to eat or survive once they come out of the shell. If God just did everything for you, you would not have developed. He says, this has been your development time the whole time. He says, it's just like the children of Israel. They took 40 years for an 11 day journey. He says, what? listen, you don't have to wait any longer. It should not have taken you this long. He says, but now I can expedite the process. I can accelerate things. I can increase things if you just believe me. He says, you got to come do it now. I'm telling you, y'all, I don't know who I'm talking to now. But I sense this thing like never before. I feel like almost like a midwife for people in the spirit. And I'm telling you, God is saying, push one more time. He's saying, push one more time. He's saying, push. He says, watch it. Oh, for some of you, you've been wanting to leave a legacy for your children and your children's children. And maybe you didn't do everything you should have done in the beginning. But God's saying, I can end your days in prosperity and years and pleasure. And I can cause you to develop, to have something for your children and your children's children. And for those generations to come, he says, for you are blessed. You are blessed. You are highly favored. If you just come near the door, no, I just got to go with this. He says, if you, he says, if you come near the door, the door is going to automatically open. It's just like the automatic doors. He says, the closer you get to it, he says, the door is going to be open. For some of you, it looks like a sliver. It looks like a small opening. He says, but if you hit that opening, you about to see the miraculous power of God like never before. Who says God can't blow up your business overnight? Listen, we're in a day and time that things can be ex expedited through technology. He says, your door shall not be shut day or night, that the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto you. God showed me that's the internet. That's, that's listen, that's the stock market. That's the exchange. Why are you sleeping your money working for you? He listen, I'm telling you, God's going to start causing you to now have land transferred over to you where before it was transferred to you, it was, watch this, you got it for pennies on the dollar. It was worthless. But the minute it comes into your hands, in some cases, God will cause natural resources to come on that land. He might cause the city, wherever you live, to come and say, hey, we're going to pay you $10 million for what you paid $10,000 for. I'm telling you, we are talking about the God of the miraculous. We are talking about the God of the supernatural. We are talking about a God of extreme faith. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Don't you dare tell me my God can't do it. He says this, if you will trust me, I'm going to cause you to walk on water in life. I'm going to cause you to be translated to new places. I'm going to cause your mind. Listen, I'm telling you, oh God, I, will, you, will you receive this? Please receive this. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay, help me, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. I sense I, Oh, God. Oh, God. Lord, ears to hear. Ears to hear. Ears to hear. I thank God for my pastor. I began to see now as I've grown in this thing, this dude was years ahead. It's the simplicity of the gospel. The fact that you got to realize that you're a new creation. I'm going to have to come back next week and teach on this some more. I'm going to have to go through the scriptures and everything. If you can realize who you are, I just had to get this out today. When you realize who you are, you will not tolerate things around you anymore. Your presence will demand explanation. When you realize that, listen, if it had not been for the Lord, you can't be arrogant with this. See, I'm intense with this because I'm coming against the spirit behind what's trying to hold you back. The spirit of containment. That spirit of fear. Show British to come in. Jesus said it like, watch this. In the book of John 17, I'm going to end here. What's that? Oh, man. In the book of John 17, verses 22 through 23 in the New Living Translation, Jesus said this. He says, I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. 
He says, I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. It has been prophesied. I'm telling you, there is about to be a kingdom collaboration. You're about to see more kingdom collaborations than you've ever seen. The time of individual kingdoms is over. He says to get this job done to the degree in which I need it for it to be done. There has to be a coming together so that the world can see that he is in us and that he is with us and that the same love that he loved us with. We as the body of Christ, the kingdom of God has to demonstrate to the world. So how can I, me and another preacher, be in competitive jealousy if we are part of the same team in the same kingdom? It's enough for everybody to eat. God wants everybody blessed. And I'm telling you, there has been a reworking and it's still in process of what the church should be in the earth. And you're about to see the church go through another transformation where each transformation takes us to a higher level. Pastors have realized during this, uh, this pandemic, there are certain things they thought they needed they no longer need because of the mindset. And God ripped that thing out of them. And so now there is a liberty and a freedom because people used to preach based off of their fear of losing people. And once they realized they didn't have certain people to preach to, they knew that, God, I'm just going to do what you're telling me to do because you're going to take care of me. Whatever I'm in, whatever season I'm in, as long as I'm obeying you, I'm good. All right, you better hear what I'm telling you. You're about to see. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Y'all better get ready. This generation of voices that God is bringing up is about to be such a radical. Some of them been so unchurched, God said, good. I ain't got to get stuff out of them based off of their predecessors. He says, if they'll just be willing to believe, but watch this, he never designed them to be at it alone. There's going to be a great coming together of wisdom and zeal. That the wisdom of how it should have been deposited and some of the younger is going to help lead some of the older into the promised seasons of their life. And so you got to be willing to submit to where God tells you to submit to and who he tells you to submit to. And the thought and the mindset for wherever God's hand is upon, his grace is there. And you got to get, I'm telling you, I, I, I saw this years ago. It's every 10 years. Biblically, a generation is about 40 years. But if you look at it in the span of church history, every 10 years, there's a shift. And we already took this shift took place in 2010. It took place in 2020. And you're about to see it. We're about to go through an elevation season like you've never experienced. You're about to see the miraculous is about to be recorded and documented at an all time high. And it's going to cause such a curiosity that people from other religions and religious sects will begin to say, my God doesn't do what your God has done. But we got to be ready to give this word of reconciliation, but to do it with humility, but with boldness. But in the spirit of love and compassion, not looking down, because if it had not been, listen, I thank God for my upbringing. I cannot imagine doing life without Jesus. I would have crumbled. My heart goes out to people who are trying to do it in the arm of the flesh on their own, meaning on their own. God is going to visit. I'm going to I'm gonna have to get ready to shut this up. <laughs> it's like a spigot. It's, a, it, it's, it's, it's an acceleration. There's a flow of the anointing. And you're going to have to learn how to flow in the spirit. Because they'll begin now. They're going to be the beginnings of things. The beginnings. Yeah, the beginnings of sorrows have already taken place. He says, but fear not, for this shall be your greatest elevation. For when the world looks at its darkest time, 
the light shines the greatest. And you need to be ready. You're going to see people of prominence and honor begin to change their mind about things. And it will be like a total midstream switch where God will begin to do some things. And I'm telling you, the word of the Lord came last week about people. And he specifically said governors. There are laws that are about to be implemented. They are trying to pass some things under the radar. They're about to be exposed. And there are some people who are going to be exposed to stop the implementation of the law that they're trying to put into play. You better be ready. There has been tremendous intercession that's been going on. And through that intercession, there is now about to be a great awakening like you've never seen. Yeah. 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 Uh-uh, 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 yeah. Let me correct that. He corrects me every time I say it. This is not about to. We in it. We in it. See, you got to realize, you're expecting, you got to be mindful of the difference between spectacular and supernatural. You're thinking for this big dramatic thing, but it's been supernatural because God has been involved. Whether it's behind the scenes, and so I'm telling you, people with wrong agendas, it won't work for them. It won't work any longer. Fight the good fight of faith. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness in heavenly places, against spiritual weakness in heavenly places. Rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual weakness in heavenly or high places. Many people are fighting a battle with the arm of the flesh when it's supposed to be fought in the spirit. And when you get into the spirit, he will strategize, give you the strategy of what you're supposed to walk out in the natural. I'm telling you. In the name of Jesus. I call on the prophets of God to come forth, to have influence with those in leaderships in political arenas, but also in the areas of education, arts and entertainment, like never before. That there will be a divine implementation of the spirit infused into society. That there will be new curriculums developed. There will be new schools that will be created that will begin to channel the will of the Father into the lives of our children, and they'll begin to grow. There has to be a supernatural transfer of wealth to fund the projects that God is doing. You're going to see kingdom collaborations, but kingdom entrepreneurship like you have never seen. He says, that's why you got to study the natural along with the spiritual so you know how to practically establish the thing that I'm telling you to create so that now I can funnel properly the amount of money I want to transfer to you. If you're not structured to handle more, I can't funnel more. God is about to expand your capacity to receive. This bottle only can handle 16.9 ounces of water. No matter how much water I pour into it, it is only designed to handle 16.9 ounces. I can pray for, for it to possess a gallon in it all I want. But if it's only designed to handle a certain amount, no matter how much I pour, it can't handle it. Let me give you a scripture. The widow woman, when Elijah went to her house, he said he commanded this woman to sustain the prophet. He says, I want you to go there. Now watch this. God sent this man there because this woman was dealing with insufficiency. He told her, gather pots, go borrow. He says, don't borrow a few. Go get as many as you can. This woman obeyed the word of the Lord. She went and got the vessels. But watch this. When the vessels ran out, the oil stopped flowing. This is huge here. If she would have had more vessels, the oil would have kept flowing. Whew. He says, you're going to stop. If you don't watch it, you will stop the progress because you're not thinking expansion. You're only thinking maintaining. 
He says, you got to think expansion so I can pour more in you. This is a time where your capacity to receive. He says, this is why I've told people to establish works in different cities and different areas to expand their capacity, to develop leadership, to oversee these different areas so that I can begin to pour more and more and more. And this is what he showed me years ago. He says, expand. He says, train them up. And this is the time, folks, where there is a training like number. I got, I got, oh God. He says, I'm telling you. He says, if you will expand your capacity, I'm going to give you more. He said, one building can't stop you. One building can't hold all I got for you. He says, you need to expand. You better hear me. Kendrick, I'm talking to you. The Holy Ghost just showed me this. He says that was part of the vision when you were supposed to go into the schools. He said, because one building couldn't hold what I, I was telling you to do. He says it was supposed to expand and expand and expand and expand and expand. He says it is not too late. He says that grace is still on you, man of God. He says he, you sit down. He says whatever you have written down, go back and revisit it. And I'm going to breathe on it again. He says, like he told, who he told Ezekiel, he says, can the dry bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, he says, begin to prophesy to the four corners, begin to tell the bones to come together and the sinews to come together. And I'm going to put muscle tissue on them. And he says, once they came together, once the structure was in place, then the Bible says that God breathed into what was reconstructed. Glory to God. He says, if you go back to what I told you to do, he says, I'll breathe on it again. He says, I'll begin to expand it again. He says, but what I'm doing now, he says, I'm going to visit you, man of God. And he says, there are things that the enemy has tried to attack you with in your mind that nobody else knows about. He says, I'm about to remove every hindrance. He says, because I'm going to pour you out. He says, your wife has been laboring. She's been praying for years. And he says, in some cases, just to get to her what she's been praying for, he's about to re revisit you. He's about to renew you. And he's about to elevate you like you have never seen to get to you what has been prayed, what has been sown for for years. He says, will you receive it? I speak the word of God over you and command it to be so now in Jesus' name. That word ain't just for him. That word is for others. Revisit. Revisit the vision. Revisit. Revisit the plan. Some of you need to downsize so it can be expanded. What do I mean? Cut off the fat. Cut off the fat. The things you thought you needed. Uh-uh. That was me. That won't God. I added that on. Uh-uh. The Lord told me keep it simple. Uh-huh. This, this, and this. And this will begin to grow and accelerate. And I'll begin to do it here a little, there a little. And it'll be like I can see a vision. Of, I can see, I'm seeing it now. I see a vision from an aerial view of this nation. And it's like red dots. And it's like here, there, there, there. And it'll begin to expand. And it'll begin to grow. And you'll begin to see a wind of the Spirit begin to move like never before. In Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it begins this summer. And it begins this summer. You'll begin to see it. You'll begin to see it. Yeah, I'll say it. I'll just say it because I see it. I don't know if they'll hear this or not. Whew. Whoever needs to hear this from Maverick City Music, your tour is a part of this move of the Spirit of God. It's about to deposit. So you're about to see the combination of the Spirit and the Word coming together. And I'm telling you, you're about to see demonstrations of the spirit of God like you've never seen that the lame will walk. No one will command them to get up. They'll begin to get up because they're in the atmosphere charged by faith. And all of a sudden now they'll begin to walk and they'll begin to run and they'll begin to maneuver. And there'll be great rejoicing. There'll be husbands who come out of wheelchairs and now they can feel like they can be husbands again to their wives. 
and minister to their wives because they stuck with them through the whole process. God is replenishing. God is restoring. God, I'm telling you, God is giving you secret things that you've been praying for. Secret desires that you never even said verbally. That God knows the condition of your heart. He says, I'm going to get these things to you. He says, we will, I'm telling you, I'm going to begin to manifest myself at an all-time high. And you got to be ready to receive this thing, says the Lord. I'm telling you, it's coming to pass. Y'all, I'm telling you, this thing is increasing. It's accelerating. The time is now. The time is now. I keep liking it. I got to stop here. The movie Independence Day. <laughs> I don't know for those that have seen it, but there was a spaceship that had come and landed years before the invasion took place. And they said that the ship was dormant for years until the invasion started taking place. He says this. He says, what's been happening is there are things that God is waking up in you now because the invasion is taking place. And so I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now that God is doing something miraculous and he's doing something supernatural in it, in and through your life. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Okay. Father, we thank you. Oh, man. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you're here today, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I'm telling you, get born again. I'm telling you, get born again. Get born again. Get born again. I want you to simply repeat this prayer after me. If that's you, you never gave Jesus, made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today. I want you to repeat this prayer, a simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if that's you and you, this is the first time you give me your life to Christ, you say, hey, I'm born again now. What do I do from here? We want you to contact us. We want you to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at spiritoffire.us. You can let us know. Send us a DM, on, whether it's our Instagram page, Spirit of Fire 10, I believe, or Spirit of Fire 1. Or you can go on our YouTube channel right here on Facebook, YouTube, wherever we're streaming from. Send us a message. Let us know you're born again. We'll have someone get in contact with you of how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Also, if you desire to connect with us, to become a part of this work, Listen, you want to become a member, you can become an e-member. No matter, you might be in another country, another state. Listen, it doesn't matter. Right now, we have our services virtually. We're in the process of believing God. We're looking for a new facility to have in-person services and things of that nature. But in the meantime, this is what God is instructing me to do. It's to minister to you and to begin to help you to build. Um, my wife has this daily thing that she ministers to the women. I have this thing with the guys. I'm ministering to them. I'm telling you, you need to be a part of this. You got to be a part. Of it. I'm telling you, I'm just saying this. I'm not saying this arrogantly. I'm not saying I'm just telling you. I know what God is doing in me right now, doing with us. God, I'm telling you, we just celebrated my wife's birthday. She sent out her testimony about just how God has been just just using her. He's just been using her. I'm telling you, I can't be more proud of. Her. And just the ministry that he's working with her and in her and developing in her. And I'm just telling you, God, man, 
our heart is to minister the words of life to you, to teach you who you are in Christ, the authority, the rights and privileges you have, and to help push you into your destiny and purpose. It's time for you to be revealed to the world who you really are. But it has to be revealed to you first. But you have to receive it and understand it. We want to help you understand who you are in Christ. So if that's you, you don't have a church home, but you want to connect with us. Just shoot us a message. Say, hey, I want to connect with your ministry. If you just want to find out more about it, let us know. We'll be more than happy to give you all the information that you need. And so we just want to thank you guys for showing up today. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, there's some information that's going to be coming up on the screen on ways to give. Uh, we actually have a new uh, way that you can support and to give. There's a QR code, I believe, that should be coming up that you can just scan it and it'll take you right to the donate picture, uh, donate page uh, that you can sew and that you can give. So you can just scan it with your phone and it'll be able to take you there. Um, you know, it's technology now, man. Ain't no more um, bucky passing right now. So <laughs> it's all done virtual. So listen, we thank God. You got to know how to move and the flow with the times as well. And so we want to give you that opportunity to give and to sow. Um, also, I believe, I'm not sure if it's on the screen. Also, for those that may just, you know, a little more old school with it, you want to give a check or something and um, send it in the mail. Um, it's P.O. Box 13423, Richmond, Virginia, 23225. That's Spirit of Fire Fellowship, P.O. Box 13423, Richmond, Virginia, 23225. There may be those that just, hey, you want to send your gift that way. Um, we still have that available as well to you. Uh, and so we just thank God for you sowing and doing that. Listen, we know that many, many platforms you could have been on today, but you chose to be on this one. Uh, for those that may have come in late, you may have come in from your church service, you just wanted to check us out and be a part. We thank God for your support. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Um, Pastor Rock and I are continuously praying for you guys. We pray for you all every day, literally. We have prayer that goes forward every day for you guys. And so we just thank God for your continued support and your love. And so right now, we're going to have our benediction prayer. I like just the final blessing over you for the day and for the week. Father, we just thank you right now that your grace is upon us. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you for divine favor that begins to manifest at an accelerated rate. We thank you for witty inventions, ideas, and concepts. We thank you for supernatural healing and health, divine health that functions in the lives of your people. We thank you right now for the reversal of diagnosis by doctors. that They'll go back and confirm the healing has taken place. And so we give you glory and we give you praise. Thank you that your people rest well. And so we give you glory. We come against nightmares, night terrors, people that have been stopping, breathing, even in their sleeping. We command that deceased. Now we command healing and health and wholeness in their bodies. And so, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and we give you the honor for it now. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, you guys, God bless you all. Love you. Out of time, certainly not out of message. And so once again here, I'm Pastor Mike here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. But we at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, have our, as our motto says, we're changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you all. See you next time. Peace.